Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. Today we're gonna look at something that's gonna save you hours of time in your editing process. Let's get to it. If you guys have been wondering why I haven't been uploading as many videos in the last couple weeks, it's because I've been on a lot of trips. First, I was in the Dominican with my friend Mark Bone. We were shooting a documentary there for about five days. In the Dominican, there is no EMS service. So when you get into an accident, there's no ambulances or paramedics that are gonna come pick you up, except for these volunteer paramedics at Riscate Ambar. Whenever there's an accident in the Dominican, these guys come and pick you up and they do it all for free. They don't get paid and they don't have any funding either. So my friend Mark Bone, who's a director, wanted to really bring some light to the situation and hopefully we can even get them some funding and maybe even some pay to do all the work that they're doing. Check out some of the behind the scenes vlogs from that trip and also stay tuned for the actual doc that'll be coming out sometime around May. After that, I was home for a day and then the next day we headed off to Italy on a road trip with Olympus. Me and my friend Peter were testing out the new Olympus OMD M1 Mark II, which is a really nice stills camera, but also has some great video features. And one of the best is the insane image stabilization. I actually shot the whole time just handheld without any support or any stabilizers, no gimbals or glide cams. And I was able to get some insane shots just with the camera by itself. Stay tuned for the review of that camera and also just the big travel film from that trip. And let me tell you, this road trip was pretty intense. We had Porsche involved. We got to drive Porsches all the way from Venice to Zermatt, Switzerland. Um, we went paragliding. I ended up crashing my drone one time. I broke one of the Olympus cameras paragliding. And we also got to hike a mountain that was over 4,000 meters high. It was just an insane time. And if you haven't already checked out my friend Peter's channel, go and check him out. He is just an amazing guy and does some amazing tutorials. So if you wanna learn more, go and check out some of his tutorials. So those are the reasons why I haven't been uploading as much lately, but we're now back to our regular scheduled programming. All right, so let's get into this tutorial. Editing can be a super time consuming process. It can take hours and hours of your time, especially when you're starting out and you're just not as used to editing. But the thing that can save you the most time is keyboard shortcuts. I know it doesn't sound as cool, but keyboard shortcuts are a huge deal. They can literally save you hours of time on every edit. I use shortcuts all the time, every time I edit, it just speeds up the process so much. And what I thought I would do is show you my favorite keyboard shortcuts that I use on every edit so that you can start using these keyboard shortcuts and start saving yourself a ton of time, which also means you can get more done, more videos and have more free time. The first one is add edit. When I first started editing, I would just use the blade tool and click and add an edit wherever I wanted to. But it's actually a lot faster to just have a keyboard shortcut that just adds the edit right away. This saves you time selecting the blade tool and then clicking wherever you want to cut. You can just simply move the playhead to where you want to add your edit and then just press the add edit keyboard shortcut. It'll cut whatever tracks are highlighted or if you have a clip selected, it'll just cut that clip. It seems like a small thing, but it'll save you clicks, which saves you time while you're editing. I rarely use the blade tool now. I just use the add edit keyboard shortcut. Number two, which is even better than the add edit, is the ripple trim edit. Now there's two different keyboard shortcuts you're gonna have here. One is the ripple trim previous edit to playhead, and the other is the ripple trim next edit to playhead. And what this keyboard shortcut does 
is it adds an edit and then it moves over the whole timeline after that. So you don't have to add an edit, delete, and then move over everything. It does it all in one click. This way you don't have to cut, delete, move. You just press one button and it all happens all at once. And so you would use the previous edit for the beginning of your clip and then the next edit for the end of that clip. So here, for example, I would choose where I want this clip to begin, press Q, that's where I have the keyboard shortcut, and then I would select where I want it to end and press W. It's super easy to use and I use this all the time, especially when I'm combing through my footage and seeing what clips I want to be in my edit. It speeds up your process a ton. I highly recommend these two keyboard shortcuts. One thing you do need to be careful though of is that it will cut every track in your timeline in that point and move it over. So let's say you have a song underneath, it'll actually cut the song also and move it over. If you don't want that to happen, you can just lock the song and then you can continue editing and the song will stay in place, but you can choose the in and out points of each clip super fast. Usually I'm editing to the music, so this is a really easy way to get the in and out points that fit the beat of the music. These are probably my favorite keyboard shortcuts to use. Number three is add marker. I like to use markers in a number of different ways. It's really nice to mark certain situations in a song, for example, when the chorus starts or when it ends, and then you know that it's right there and your clips will always snap to that spot. You can also just mark a spot on the timeline so that you can quickly move a clip to that spot and have it start at the exact right time that you want it. Markers save you time so that you don't always have to be scrubbing through to find that right point. You can just mark it and then go and find the clips that you want and put them in right where you want them. Number four is using the option or alt key. I use a Mac so it's the option key and the option key can do a lot of different things. One of the main things that I do is I use it to duplicate things. So you can just hold down option and drag and release the clip and it'll duplicate it instead of just moving it. Another thing that's really useful with the option key is that you can manipulate the in and out points of audio and video separately. So let's say you want the audio to come in a little bit earlier, you can just press option and then drag the audio and it won't move the video in point. It'll just move the audio in point. So this is a really great way to use a keyboard shortcut to save you a lot of time. The next two are tools that I use all the time, but I also have them on a keyboard shortcut so I can get to them really quickly. So number five is the slip tool. This allows you really easily to scrub through and find the right in and out point that you want for that clip. When you use the slip tool, it actually shows you what your first frame and your last frame of that clip is. So you can quickly refine your in and out points to perfectly fit your edit. This is a really great way to just refine your in and out points. Number six is the rolling edit tool. This tool I use all the time when I'm syncing the footage to the song. Sometimes the edit point is just a little bit off from the snare or the bass drum or whatever I'm editing to. And you can use the rolling edit tool to quickly move over the edit one or two frames or however many frames you want so that the edit hits that beat perfectly. That's the purpose that I use it for most often, but you can also use it for other things. So there you go, those are my favorite keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time, every edit. And I promise you, if you start using these, you will save yourself hours in your editing process. It also just makes the editing process so much more enjoyable when you're able to do things so much faster and just make your editing process so much more snappy. I find that if the edit takes me too long, then I start getting tired and lazy and then the edit suffers. But keyboard shortcuts will really decrease the time that you need to edit your projects and therefore they're just gonna turn out so much better when you're not all tired after editing for hours and hours. Keyboard shortcuts can be a little bit annoying to get used to at first, but after you use them for a bit, you won't even think twice about it. You'll know exactly where they are and figure out a layout for your keyboard shortcuts that works for you. I customize all the shortcuts that I use on a daily basis. 
That way they're right there where I need them and I can get to them super quick. So I kind of place the shortcuts that I use most often in the same area so I can get to them super quickly. So that's it, those are my keyboard shortcuts. If you have any other shortcuts that you really like using, comment down below. I'd love to hear which ones you guys are using and start practicing with these keyboard shortcuts. You'll be an editing wizard in no time. That's it for now. Thanks for joining me today. Enjoy the filmmaking process and go make some travel memories.